One way to hedge a well-diversified equity portfolio is to reduce its beta or to neutralize its beta. And here I'd like to show in two steps with a simple and then the more complicated example that follows John Hull. I'd like to try and show the intuition for how we determine the number of futures contracts that would reduce or neutralize the portfolio's beta. And the key is to think about the dollar beta, which is the product of the portfolio's value and its beta. That's the dollar beta. So here is the formula for the special case of changing the beta of a well-diversified equity portfolio. And we know from experience that it can be hard to access the intuition of this formula. And so for that reason, I have this in, I'm illustrating this in two steps. The first step here is my simple case. And then the second step generalizes by showing you John Hull's example. And the key idea, I think, my opinion here is to focus on the dollar beta more than the beta. So if we look at this formula right here, if we just back this out and start at the first step, what we have here on the right is the dollar beta of the underlying portfolio or the portfolio that we call the underlying exposure. And dollar beta is simply the beta of the portfolio multiplied by the value of the portfolio. Very straightforward. If we wanted to neutralize the beta of that portfolio, all we would do is hedge, or in this case, use short futures contracts with a um, exactly offsetting dollar beta. And the dollar beta of that, of the futures contracts would simply be the number of futures contracts times the notional value per contract multiplied by the beta of each contract. So very similar, except that we're using here the S&P 500 index futures contracts where we can roughly assume that the beta is one, so that drops out conveniently. And so the dollar beta of the S&P 500 futures contract is gonna be simply the number of contracts multiplied by the notional value per contract. So if we wanted to neutralize the beta of the portfolio, which is the underlying exposure, we would simply short the number of contracts, or assuming our portfolio is a long position, we'd short the number of contracts such that our dollar, our dollar beta was exactly offsetting. And you can see how easy this solves for N if we just, if we are, if we comprehend this equality of dollar beta idea solving for N, then the number of contracts to neutralize the beta is simply the portfolio's beta multiplied by the ratio of values. That is the portfolio and the numerator and then the denominator, the notional value of a single futures contract. And so over here, just some simple assumptions, the uh, S&P 500 index is currently higher than 2000. I'm rounding down, try to keep it as simple as possible. And then I'm also setting the um, in the futures contract price equal to the same 2000, right? But these are separate ideas. The first, the S&P 500 index level, that's just the, the composite index. And then the, this is the futures price where, so it's a futures contract and the underlying commodity is the index. But I'm setting the price the same. And then we have the S&P 500 futures contract unit. That's the size of a single contract, right? All futures contracts have specifications. Those are designed by the exchanges, not, not selected by users. And it happens to be that for an S&P 500 futures contract, the size, aka unit, is $250 multiplied by the index price. And so, the if the index price happens to be 2000 the notional on a single contract you can see here denoted uh, v sub f that's right here and here is is the multiple of 250 multiplied by the index price of 2000 so i have a notional here of a single contract of 500000 so in a super simple case here 
where let's just say my portfolio value is 500,000 and let's just say the beta happens to be 1.0 by coincidence, then here's, I've got this in red just to emphasize this idea of dollar beta. Dollar beta will really help you solve any of these problems. Um, that dollar beta is the value of the portfolio multiplied by the beta. So the dollar beta here happens to be 500,000 such that the hedge that neutralizes beta is going to be the hedge that also gives us $500,000 beta. And in this case, that's a notional of 500,000 multiplied by the number of contracts. See, that's on this side over here, equals the dollar beta of my hedge is 500,000. When those are equal, I've neutralized beta. And so just to illustrate, if the market return went down 10%, then my portfolio with a beta of 1.0 presumably would lose uh, uh, $50,000. And but my beta neutralizing hedge would have been a short short one contract. And so um, under under assumptions, my short futures contract would have produced a gain of 50,000 because it, it also has a beta of one. So exactly offsetting. And I got that by just multiplying the 10% uh, times the notional value of the futures contract. And so um, just for one quick example, if the portfolio value is 5 million and the beta uh, of the beta of the portfolio is 1.5, then you can see uh, the uh, the way that I prefer to think about this is if we want to neutralize beta, what's the dollar beta of that portfolio? It's 5 million. Uh, I hope I said 5 million before. 5 million times beta 1.5 is dollar beta of 7.5 million, such that using this formula and the number of contracts we that we would short to neutralize beta is 15, right? Because that's the... Um, here we have the beta of 1.5, that would be equal to the beta of 1.5 multiplied by the value of my portfolio, 5 million, divided by the notional value per contract, uh, which is only 500,000. So, so I didn't get my units, that's a millions here. And that is a short 15 contracts. That gives me a dollar beta on the futures contract also equal to 7.5 million. So I have neutralized my beta. And then I said at the onset that this is a special case because um, we're talking about neutralizing beta completely, but we can generalize this to the formula that when I mentioned, we know from experience is harder to access the intuition, but we can generalize this to the change in beta, right? So otherwise the same. Otherwise, we have still the same ratio of values. I want to keep in mind that because we're solving for the number of contracts, that what's in the denominator here is the notional value of a single futures contract. But I've just generalized by replacing beta with the change in beta, because maybe we don't want to neutralize beta to zero. Maybe we just want to reduce beta from 1.5 to 0 0.5. So that works here too, though. We can use the delta beta. And so um, I have John Hull's. You don't have to stick with me for the more complex example, but if you're interested in understanding John Hull's Table 3.4, that's right here. And but it's the same idea, and that is, if we start right here with this formula, the dollar beta works for us because it's additive and subtractive. So right here we have the initial or the underlying portfolio, the portfolio, which is the underlying exposure, it's dollar beta. If we add some number of futures contracts, then we're adding, or if we're shorting, we're subtracting. In the hedge, we're probably sh subtracting for the shorting. But either way, we're adding or subtracting dollar beta. And what we're getting is a new dollar beta for the net portfolio. So the net portfolio is the exposure plus the hedge, that's the net in net portfolio. 
and its dollar beta is going to be the sum of the two dollar betas. And so um, that'll always work for us and that will allow us to change from the current beta here, just regular beta, to the target beta, which is beta sub t. And so solving for n here, that's very straightforward, I'm not going to do that in detail. The number of contracts here is the difference between the target beta and where we started with the beta. And of course, the this beta for the futures contract is going to be 1, drop out. And we end up here with the general version of that same formula. The number of contracts to change from here, the beta where we start, to here, the target beta, is just equal to the change in that beta, the delta and beta multiplied there by the ratios. So in Hull's example, over here I've got, um, uh, even though it's the recent addition, he's got lower prices on the indexes, but uh, the S&P index level of 1,000, the uh, futures price a little bit higher at 1,010. This is the same, has to be. So the notional value of a single contract is 252,500. Then we've got some assumptions, risk-free rate, dividend on the index, portfolio beta, let's say is 1.5. And in this case, the target beta happens to be zero. So that's neutralizing the beta, getting to uh, beta of zero, net beta of zero on the portfolio. But you can see here on the spreadsheet, which I'll share, you could change this to any target beta. So all, all that do is replacing the beta T here. But here we're assuming zero, so we wanna neutralize the beta. We have a portfolio value here. That's just an assumption of a little bit over 5 million, 5 million 50,000. And then solving for the number of contracts and just using this formula. It's the change in beta. In this case happens to be um, zero minus 1.5. So negative 1.5 times the ratio of the portfolio value in the numerator divided by, in the denominator, the notional value of a single contract and gives us negative 30. And in this case, um, I'm using, I'm preserving the mass. So the negative comes out to indicate to us that it's a short in the futures contract to reduce the beta here. Hopefully that part's intuitive. Then his table 3.4, is simply to illustrate scenarios about the performance of this hedge under different scenarios. And the idea is that uh, if we're the manager who owns this position, has a long position in this portfolio with a beta 1.5, their hedge horizon is three months, and then they're using uh, index, fut index futures contracts with four month maturities. So that's pretty common, right? To um, have the futures contract mature right after the hedge horizon, so you don't hold them to maturity and are forced into delivery. So um, then he's got the value of the index that starts at a thousand here going to different scenarios. So on the left here, it's dropping. On the right here, it's increasing, right? So just on the naked position here for that portfolio, this here is a 900. Uh, the portfolio is not performing well. It's a negative 15%. So that, that is the whole point of the hedge is to protect the manager in these downside scenarios. So he's got um, the value of the S&P 500 under this downside scenario of 900, and then the same futures index price today that we started at. And then he's got an assumption for the futures price of the index in three months, right? So these two numbers are in three months. And then the futures price is just in his scenarios, two or three dollars above the spot price of the index in three months, which makes sense because it today at the start of the hedge, it's a four, it's a three month hedge, but the futures contract matures in four months. In three months, there's only going to be a month left on the futures contract, so it'll be pretty close to maturity. So we're expecting some convergence. So he's reasonably uh, modeling here some convergence. So spot price goes down to 900, futures price goes to 902, and there is a gain on the futures position because there was a drop in the price and this manager's hedging with shorts. So the return on the market here is negative 9.750, and that's just due to the, that's just the ratio of the drop in the spot index price. And then he's got 
that corresponds to an expected return on the portfolio, which is simply the application of the capital asset pricing model. Like if I zoom in on that, right? All these got here for the expected return on the portfolio is the, it's a three months instead of annualized. So you've got three twelfths, but it's the, aside from that, it's the risk-free rate plus the portfolio's beta multiplied by the uh, market's excess return. So it's application of the capital asset pricing model based on the beta. So in other words, if that beta is accurate and the return on the market under this assumption is negative 9.75, then the portfolio with this uh, pretty high beta is doing even worse. It's negative 15%. And um, so the expected portfolio value here, you can see, is just a percentage directly applied to that portfolio. And so uh, it's down to 4.2 million. But of course, we had this hedge. The whole point was to neutralize the beta, we have the hedge. And so the expected value of the position in three months, the net, what I call the net position, is the portfolio that suffered negative 15%, plus though the gain on the short futures position that provided the hedge protection. And so that's really all this column does is model that scenario. We, and he's showing five scenarios here where the, where the uh, S&P is doing poorly, but the hedge is really making up for it. And then over the, as we move over here to the right uh, at 1100, there's a gain on the underlying exposure, um, but okay, the hedge cuts both ways and the hedge is producing a loss, um, right? So here's the, in green, the portfolio. And then um, the point of the scenario here is to show under all five of these scenarios, see how there's not a lot of variability. They're not perfectly, um, they're not perfectly equal to each other. And it's a good it's a good mental exercise to ask, why aren't they exactly the same? But that's not the point. The point is that they're all pretty close. So the hedge is performing pretty well. And so that's just a holes illustration that's a little bit more involved. You want to take a closer look, I put the spreadsheet up. But remember, remember that uh, to sort this out, the dollar beta is additive. So um, the, the way to solve this, I think, is to think in terms of dollar betas which is simply for the portfolio, the value of the portfolio multiplied by the beta, then you can add or subtract beta and including you can um, neutralize the beta by finding the hedge that, that exactly offsets with the, the dollar beta of the portfolio. Thank you.